give you some ideas today for four point meal variations that you could be doing. Things that will really help to mobilize your spine and build some strength in your upper body. Um, it will also help you to, to understand if you're doing correct weight shift for walking and stuff like that. So let's get to it. So, um, oh yeah, before we go on, please, if you've got wrist issues or knee issues, this is not really the class for you. So you could try doing this on your forearms, but you know, you're gonna lose a lot of what we're doing here. So you can maybe try doing it standing with your hands against the wall um, and try and modify it that way. But I'm gonna teach this as if you're absolutely fine with um, putting weight on your wrists and on your knees. So I think one of the hardest things for our four point kneel is to actually get our correct um, placement. That's always really tricky. Um, so I'm gonna give you a couple of pointers, a couple of things that you can maybe think about that might help you in that position. Um, so I've got this little spiky ball because the one thing that I notice a lot with clients is that quite often they sort of tuck under and they think that they're straight, but they're not. So you're actually, what you're doing is you're sort of tucking and slumping the lower body. So I'm going to get you to go into your four point kneel position with your knees directly underneath your hips and your toes tucked to fire up the muscles at the back of the hip. Your hands are going to be ever so slightly in front of your shoulders just to make sure your shoulders stay relaxed. If you bring them directly underneath, that can bring quite a bit of tension into your neck and it doesn't put your shoulder at its best advantage point. So now we're going to spread the hands nice and wide and I want you to push the floor away without losing your little ball in your low back. Make sure though that you're not slumping your ribs. Did you see how my ball moved there? So we want to make sure that the ribs are in line with your hip bone here. So we're not going to move the rib ahead of the hip bone. We're going to lift the rib and stay nice and wide through here. So our abdominals are actually working at this point. Now from here, I just want you to gently slump. Good. And then push back up again. So what's happening here is that you're sort of moving your rib cage down towards the floor. Imagine you dropping the whole front of your body down into water, and then you're gonna push away to pull yourself up out of the water, okay? So gently sink and push back up. So you wanna guard against the sort of sinking and slumping when we're doing these exercises. You wanna push away, so rather do that as an exercise. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to very gently hinge back. So you, you're getting a bit of a hip warm up here. You'll notice my ball is staying where it is. So I don't want you to go so far so that your tail tucks under and you lose your little spiky ball. So just keeping that gentle curve in your lower back, because that is your natural curve. If you're feeling like you're hyperextended, you're probably doing too much of a curve, just lift your belly towards the ball a little bit. Just reaching back and coming forward. Good. So now you're gonna just shift your weight from side to side. So you're gonna move all your weight onto one side, and then you can push the floor away, and you should be able to lift that opposite knee. So if you've lost your ball, it means that you actually lifted your knee from your back instead of from your thigh bone, lifting up into your hip socket. So let's shift over to the other side. And again, push the floor away. Whoops, I was so busy showing you how to push the floor away, I lost my ball. So you're gonna push the floor away after you've moved across, and then you should be able to lift your leg just a little bit off the ground. Good, coming back. We're going to go back to the first side, pushing the floor away, and then you're going to extend that leg back. So you might start with keeping the foot on the ground, but if you can, you're just going to lift it up slightly. Don't try and go too high, because remember, you've still got to keep your ball there. So again, if you've lost your ball, it means that you've twisted your pelvis. So you want to slide sideways like an old-fashioned typewriter, or reach back to come up. Good. And then come back to the middle. And again, sliding out, good, and coming back, and shift across to the other side, keeping your pelvis nice and level. So that's the shift that your pelvis makes when you're walking. So we can get rid of that ball now, 
and just sit back and have a little rest and just swivel your arms or your wrists give them a bit of a break good are you ready for the next one now you're going to come back we're going to move the spine so you're going to think of pushing your hands forward and your heels back so that you can create a curve in your spine then you're going to pull your hands and your legs towards each other and you're going to lengthen back out remember not to slump yeah keep your shoulders sliding away from your ears and again exhale lift the tummy and curve feel your tail tucking under so if you had your ball there it would definitely rolled away by now pull everything together and lengthen away finding your ball in your low back position and again pushing away curve inhale and lengthen getting really tall sitting bones back crown of the head forward and exhale and curve and inhale to lengthen good now you're going to pick one foot up keep your knee on the ground swing your leg out so your thigh bone is turning in and you're going to turn and look towards your foot so you're doing a side bend now you're going to swing the leg across the other way and look at it and you're going to swing and look swing across the center line and look swing away from the center line look at your foot go the other way and look at your foot and then come back lift the other foot up we do the same thing turn the leg in so you can see the foot poking out to the side cross it over the middle and try and look at it on that side and moving over so your ribs are going to move as well and coming across one more time each way Good. and then just have a little rest again just give your wrists a bit of a rest you can give them a little twirl if you like how are you guys doing you ready for the next one this one is lovely all right so this one is a lean so what you're going to do is you're going to push push the opposite arm and hip away from each other and then you're going to pull back and push away and pull back so you're thinking of that cross so if you think this hand towards that knee, that hand towards this knee, you're going to push away and you're going to pull back and you're going to push away and pull back. Get a lovely hip stretch there when you're doing that. Push away and come back. Good. Now you're going to keep pushing away, making sure your shoulder blades are wide and then you're just going to transfer your weight onto one hand. And then you're going to transfer your weight onto the other hand. So it's really important that you don't slump. Because as soon as you slump, can you see how your shoulder just gets really tight? So keep thinking of shrugging your shoulders down towards your hips. So that you can have this sort of buoyancy up above the mat. So you can move your hand. And I'd suggest that you might want to lead with your thumb towards the ceiling. And back. Push away thumb towards the ceiling and back good and then again just sit back and just give your wrists a little bit of a twirl all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to use that transference of weight through the legs and the hips and it's almost like you're trying to take off a crawling and then changing your mind and then we're going to build that up a little bit more so you're going to tuck your toes under you're going to find that lovely neutral long spine making sure that you think about where your ball would be sitting in your low back and how your ribs are lifted and connected so you're going to push the floor away and you're going to step one arm forward and the knee forward and then you're going to step back opposite arm and knee comes forward and back step forward change your mind and come back step forward on the other side and come back so stepping forward and coming back stepping forward if I was being really mean to you, I would make you keep the ball in your lower back so that as you step forward, that you don't lose that ball like I just did because I dropped my hip. So that wasn't a good move on my part. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to see if I can keep myself lifted away from the floor as I step. Lift away from the floor as I step. That's it. So the ball might roll, but it shouldn't come off your lower back lovely all right i'll stop the the ball madness for now just sit back again have a little rest and now we're going to do knee hovers so this is 
how we progressively load this exercise from just doing opposite arm and leg forward and back. We're now going to go, we're going to really push the floor away so much that we're going to float the knees. We're just going to hover them, maybe only about that high off the mat. So we're going to come back into this position. Really finding all your good alignment, knees under your hips, toes tucked, hands slightly in front of the shoulders and really wide, sitting bones reaching to the wall behind you, ribs lifted and the neck nice and long. So take a nice inhale because you're going to need your abs here. As you exhale, smile the abdominals wide across your hips and just hover your knees. Hold, two, three, and then slowly land like a helicopter. And again, exhale, pushing away, coming up. Hold, two, three, and slowly lower down. And again, exhale, pushing away. Shoulders are nice and wide, neck is relaxed. Tummy is just smiling and slowly come down. And again, exhale to come up, taking it a bit further, stepping forward and back, stepping forward and back. Going back to our previous exercise, transferring your weight. Last one, hover all the way down to the ground and then just sit back. You should be feeling quite warm by now. Excellent, all right. So let's just um, lengthen things out a bit. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to go into a pike position, but we're going to come back to that knee hover in between. So this is a lovely myofascial stretch that we can do to release the spine and the hamstrings, the calves, the feet, just pretty much anything through the back of your body. So we're just going to push up into the pike. I don't want you to think about straightening your legs necessarily. It's more about hinging from the hip. So it's, it's about taking the head down and the tail up like a seesaw without buckling at your back. As soon as you find your tail sort of tucking under, you're going to be loading your spine. So we just want to hinge from these ball joints that we have here in the shoulders and in the hips when we're doing this. All right, so just you might want to watch me once and then join in. So again, we're starting from that beautiful four point kneel position. We're going to come into our knee hover and then we're going to reach the sitting bones up towards the ceiling, pushing back. You can see my legs aren't straight. Make sure your knees are over your ankles. Then you're going to come forward, pitching over your shoulders, double knee bounce, and then reach back again on your inhale. Exhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, exhale, inhale. Reach the tail to the sky. Exhale, exhale, inhale. And exhale, exhale, inhale. And then slowly come forward, lowering down, and just have a little rest. Beautiful, all right. We're now going to do um, an exercise that I call the bear crawl. I think I might go out of shot for this um, exercise when I'm standing up, but I'll talk you through it anyway. So what we're gonna be doing is from our four point kneel, we're gonna walk our way back into a crouch and you're gonna walk yourself up to standing. Bend your knees, and I want you to think of the knees going over the center of the ankles and pushing the hips out behind you. Walk yourself out into your knee hover position. Now releasing your back foot, the foot furthest away from me. Turn it out and cross it across the front. Swivel and sit down. Then you're going to push yourself up. You're going to swivel back and walk your way back and all the way up to standing. And we're gonna do that again. Bend your knees, shift your hips out behind you, walk yourself out into your knee hover position. Release your foot, swivel through, and sit. Push yourself up, swivel back into your knee hover, and walk your way back up into standing. Okay, I'm gonna do it the other way now. So you're gonna bend your knees, you're gonna shift your hips back, walk your way out, Release that foot, swivel and sit. Really pulling that armpit down to swivel into your um, knee hover position, walking back and standing up. 
And we're going to do that again. Bend your knees. Push the hips back. Walk your way out. Swivel and sit. Push yourself up. Swivel back to your knee hover position. Walk yourself back and bring yourself up. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that challenge. Um, I can certainly feel my heart rate is going. I'm actually feeling quite happy. That was lovely. And thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.